Hey everybody, it's John with Freshwater Systems. Today I'd like to talk to you about RO, reverse osmosis, efficiency. And the efficiency really talks directly to the amount of water going to drain compared to the amount of water going to the storage tank. For years, ROs have been considered big water wasters and quite frankly, they kind of are. It's one of the best kept secrets in the industry is to really how much water uh, from an RO system goes down the drain. So we're going to talk a little in depth about the differences between recovery and efficiency. Recovery talks to the fact that when these systems are built and marketed, they take the storage tank out of the equation. Now the storage tank is hydro pneumatic and I'll, I'll get to a little more detail in a minute and they run just the membrane. And the membrane produces X number of gallons that would go into the storage tank, all the while they're sending a certain amount of water to the drain. And that ratio is based upon how much production the membrane will provide. The flow restrictor that's on these systems create resistance so that the RO system functions. It's that resistance that forces water through that membrane. Well, without a storage tank on it, it's a fixed ratio going to drain, going to the storage tank. And the majority of the systems built today run a recovery of 25%, plus or minus. That 25% means for every four gallons that goes into the system, one gallon is collected into this tank, that's your 25%, and the rest of it goes to the drain. So the recovery is calculated at 25%. Well, the reality is when I hook that storage tank up to it, those numbers all change. The storage tank, being hydro pneumatic, collects the water. And the, inside the tank, there's two chambers. There's the chamber where the water goes, and there's the chamber where the air is and the air will compress where water will not. As water enters the storage tank, it compresses down into the air chamber. As that air chamber compresses, the pressure goes up. And that pressure is the force that moves the water to your faucet when you're ready for a glass. But there's also a downside to that building pressure. It's now fighting the membrane production because the membrane is still trying to push water into that storage tank. So as that pressure builds, the amount of water going into the tank slows down, slows down, slows way down. And by the time the tank is full, it's really slow. All the while, we have a fixed amount of water going to the drain. So the recovery rate in reality once we have the storage tank in there, could be as high as 10, 12, or 15 to 1. If I'm a, a, just two people in the family and we don't use water that much, and the water we draw from the tank is just a little bit, maybe a couple of glasses, maybe enough to fill a coffee pot, and then we don't touch it for the rest of the day, it's always working at that high pressure accumulation in the tank, which means the ratio or recovery rate then is just horrible. The other downside is the quality of water also goes down when that tank is the fullest because the membrane is fighting the tank. Now RO efficiency has to include the storage tank. Since recovery is just talking about the membrane and it all changes when you put the tank on, efficiency has to mean what the system does and how much water to tank versus how much water to drain. Efficiency has to be with the entire system working. Recently, the EPA is wanting to include reverse osmosis in their water sense program. And just for all the reasons I, I discussed, they want to find the most efficient products in the industry that will meet the criteria of EPA's water sense. Their suggested efficiency right now is 30%, and that includes the storage tank. 
Well, as you can imagine, a lot of the folks that make these systems are saying, now, wait a minute, that, that, that's not going to work. How are we going to make that number? So there are some products available in the industry that actually will help make that number, and it's called the permeate pump. The permeate pump acts as a motor to make these systems very efficient. It actually blocks the pressure buildup in the tank from getting back to the membrane, and it uses the water going to drain as the engine to push water into the tank and allow the membrane to work at that recovery rate. And the other benefit is the permeate provides quality of, of water all the way through. If you remember, I said as the tank builds in pressure, the quality of the membrane kind of goes down because it's fighting that pressure. Well, the permeate pump allows that pressure not to fight the membrane. It keeps that from happening. So we have an excellent uh, efficiency. When you're looking for a water system and you want it to be efficient, put the permeate pump in your mind as a piece of equipment that makes that happen. A standard reverse osmosis system that is the unit itself attached to its storage tank is where we lose efficiency. This unit as the tank fills is going to fight that pressure buildup and eventually we're going to have really bad efficiency. A unit that has the permeate pump on it, on the other hand, will maintain the recovery rate as well as the efficiency after we've hooked everything up. The permeate pump creates a block, if you will, of the pressure buildup in this tank of pushing back against our membrane. It actually uses water going to the drain to help push the water into the tank without sacrificing any of our efficiency. So this unit with the permeate pump, at least we get 25% efficiency with the tank, which means from empty to full, we maintain that number. And with using a little bit more restrictive uh, flow control on the drain line, we actually can bump that up maybe to 30 percent. We'll have to see where the EPA lands with that number, but it's achievable with the permeate pump. Well, I hope you got something out of it. Be sure and like this video and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to learn more about the permeate pump, check us out at freshwatersystems.com.